Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna. I'm coming to you today from Manassas, Virginia in the U.S. It is Monday, April 25th, 2022. This is a podcast about knitting, and today I have some weaving and a children's literature book. Let's go ahead and get started then. I will start with the weaving. I started off doing a project that I found in this magazine called Little Looms. It was a project to make some mug rugs. And I thought that was a small project that would probably be easy for me. I should have marked the page here, the, the big, there it is. And it was this houndstooth pattern and it looked easy, which it is, it's deceptively, I don't know if deceptively easy is right, but it's easier than it looks. So to make that kind of cool design, I made two sets and they recommended that you use this yarn, which I've never used before. It's a Lion brand yarn called 24-7 Cotton. It's a mercerized cotton, so it's got a little shine to it. And about the same weight as like a sugar and cream, it is, I think, a worsted weight yarn. The color that they made theirs out of, and I did make a set of that same color scheme is sky and white. And this is what they turned out like. Now, of course, you can make them bigger or smaller if you wanted. I don't think I even paid attention to how long they said to make it. I just made them however long I wanted. This I made correctly. This was actually this was the second set that I made because I had to order the sky color. The my local Joanne Fabrics had the yarn, but only in a few colors. So, but this is the yarn I was able to get while I was from Joanne's. So I got that locally, but I made a mistake. I wonder if you noticed the difference already. The way it had been intended is to have stripes going both vertically and horizontally. And I only have the horizontal stripes on the first one. I wasn't paying attention. I just thought I knew what they were doing. So I thought I knew what I was doing. And I did fine on the warp, but then on the weft, I wasn't following. I was just doing the same thing over and over again. So, which is fine. It makes no difference at all. It's just a little different design. But these are a teal and a cream color. So I made a set and when you warp your loom, I think it was set to make a set of six. I might have only gotten five of the lighter, the this color way, because I did make them a little bit longer. So those are both going to be gifts. One I've this I I just even though it made six, I was giving a set of four because I was giving it with a coffee mug. So I found a set of four coffee mugs. So I just kept two of them back. And also these had a mistake on them. There was a a float on the back of one and I didn't care for the edge on another. But this houndstooth pattern was really very easy and fun to work up. Something that came out in that sign. Either way with the vertical and horizontal stripes or just the uh, horizontal stripes. They both turned out really nice. So I thought that was a fun project. The fringe looked really nice on them. I did hem stitch as they recommended between each set. So you do one. And then I put a cardboard spacer to leave enough that there would be two inches in between each one so that I could cut down the middle and have an inch of fringe on each of on that side of each one. So that's what they said to do. I just followed the directions straight from this magazine, Little Looms. And it has some other interesting things and there are a few that are beyond my current abilities and um, a couple that, you know, I could do. So that's the, something that I wove. I don't know what order I did any of this in and it really doesn't matter anyway. I did make some dish towels and the last time, I believe the last time I showed you these that I made, and this was where I had doubled the warp threads. So through each slot and each um, hole, I put two threads, and this was the 8-2 cotton. This set, I did the same thing. And I actually made the same pattern when I was warping the loom, but then when I was doing the weft, I did four different designs. So this is one. 
and these are these are fairly large size they're actually about 24 25 inches long after washing but I'm just gonna hold them up this way because it's easier so that was I think this is my favorite of the weft designs but then there's also this maybe if I hold it up this way it'll give more of an idea and then I just made them up as I went I did this and actually I think there is a there is a difference I'd forgotten about between them and let me see if I can see what it is here I think I'm crazy that I can't remember it seems like I had done something a little different but no yes I did here's what it was the first two I did yellow right here and I decided it didn't show up so the second two have blue right there which I do like better it, having that show up more and I think the last one is this and the reason I was changing some of them up is that my blue was running out. I did buy some more, but I just wanted to make sure that the blue was going to last. So towards the end, I wasn't uh, putting as many lines of the blue going um, across on them. So these four, and I am knitting some matching dishcloths to go with them. I have white, yellow, and blue yarn to do that with. I've I have finished one blue, I'm working on another blue, and then I have to do all of the others. So that is something that I worked on. Oh, whoops, dropping stuff. Then I wanted to do another dish towel. And I looked, I happened to be look, sitting looking at this pillow that was on my couch, and I thought, I'm pretty sure I have colors that match that. And I did, I had some yoga yarn, which is an 8-2 cotton, in that coral color. That was one of the colors in this dish towel that I made a while back. Had light pink, the raspberry, and the coral color, or orange. Each one you used the entire thing. This one was entirely, um, the weft was entirely in that, that, orange color. One, another was entirely in the light pink color and the third one was entirely done in the raspberry color. But of course they all have the same warp. So they all look a little bit different. But I had that, that orange or coral color from this and it was the yoga yarn. Now yoga yarn is made by Ashford. It's an 8-2 cotton also, but it's not 100% cotton. It's 82% cotton and it has a 10% nylon core, which they say makes it a little stretchier. So, you know, that's fine. Still, it's I've used this plenty of cotton for absorbency purposes on a dish towel. But my other colors in that, the green and the beige, there's a very little bit of beige in, in that pillow. Let's see here. Were not yogi yarn. What I had in the green was a Maurice Brassard 8-2 cotton that is 100% um, cotton. And then the same thing with the beige, same brand, and just an off-white or natural. So I thought, well, that's fine. I'll just go ahead and do that. But didn't really work out so well. Looks-wise, I like how this turned out. I like the colors and all. But you may notice that right where you see that, this color either here or up here at the top. And that looks a little straight, but you might also notice this right here kind of billows out. Bottom line, when you wash it afterwards, the 100% cotton shrank more than the, eight to, the um, 82, 18 shrunk. And I've washed it three times. So what I decided to do was buy the green in the yoga yarn. And I didn't buy the beige because they don't have a beige, they have a white, and I wanted it to be the off-white or beige. 
And I thought, well, that's a very small part of it that'll be the 100% cotton versus, and so I think it'll ultimately look all right, even though that one piece will be 100%, that one color will be 100% cotton. So I'm gonna make a set of three of these. And now I have the, these two colors in the yoga yarn. Yoga yarn is about twice the price of the 100% cotton. But I was gonna have to buy two colors to do, I don't know how, I, I had it figured out somehow that I was gonna need to still, oh, I already had a whole one of this and I was gonna have to buy a, one of this. And so it ended up coming out. I, I think my math was probably wrong. It probably would have been cheaper, except I, I'd already bought one to come. It's like, that was gonna be a waste of this because I already had it then. It already had been replaced. So I decided to just go with that. Anyway, long story long. Next thing I wove, I love this so much. I used this yarn, which I purchased at Hobby Lobby. It's called Yarn B. It's authentic hand-dyed yarn. It's, this is called Techno Tribe. And I was interested to see how it would look woven up. Now, had I seen the skein looking just like this, I probably wouldn't have considered doing that. This skein has been re-skeined after it was dyed, but one of the skeins that was hanging on the rack, same color, same t name, had not been re-skeined. So you could see that there was a block of colors and then black. And I thought, you know, I have a feeling that might look really nice woven into a scarf. So I bought one skein of it. I ended up going back and getting another one. And here's what it came out like. Is that, so? I love it. it I, I just think that looks gorgeous. I made it really long. I don't remember how long, but I think it's 78 inches long maybe. And look how cool the, twisted fringe looks at the end. Maybe if I just get one. They all are different and I just think this is beautiful. So after I made it, I thought this would look so good if you had a matching hat, not woven, knit. So I still have this, this much left over and I forget how many grams that is. It's about maybe 25 grams left over. So I, it wasn't enough to make a hat, but I thought I went and bought another skein and I'm going to knit a hat. Because this is fingering weight. Well, usually when I knit a hat, I don't use fingering weight, but I have a couple of patterns for fingering weight hats. So I'm gonna look through those and decide which one. But I'm very pleased with that scarf and how it turned out. I'm looking here at my table, I do have something else that was woven. I made another scarf. Excuse me. Sorry, I had a little interruption there. I made another scarf and I used this yarn called Knitting Fever. And that is the name right there. I don't know how you say that. C-H-A-R-O-I-T-E. And it is color number 39. So it's these orchids, pink and purple kind of thing. And they're long color runs. I made a hat once out of this. This one is called... Um, uh, painted Desert, Painted Desert, but I think this is Painted Desert, but there's also Painted Sky, and I know I made a hat a long time ago that was more blue than this. So I thought, oh, that'll, I think that'll be nice the way that with the color changes. Um, again, it's pretty subtle. You, you don't see, but you do, you do see some stripes in there. And there is difference from the beginning with this darker to the end is more, is lighter. Very, very soft. I I, really, I think it'd be nice to make a hat to go with this one too. So I just have to look and see, remember where I bought this. It might have been that I bought this at a yarn shop that's closed now, but um, I may look and see. I've had, I've had it for a little while, that yarn. So I am using up yarns that were here. And of course, then you also get ideas and buy some more, but that's okay. Um, overall, I've been on the negative side of more yarn being used than coming in. That's a positive there. So let's see, I had some finished knitting projects. I had shown this, my Radiant Gradient shawl 
last time I made a podcast and I was not finished. It was in progress and now it's been blocked. It is finished and so we'll get it out here. This is again a gradient that was called Battleship. It was a done roving yarn and this is made with slip stitches. I did do some cutting of the yarn and it didn't make any of the negative uh, on this. It took out, I wasn't going to have a lot of blue with the gray at this end. See, I started off and I had gray with blue and I wanted for sure to have blue with gray at the end. So the gray was a really long section and I cut some of it out because I wanted to be sure that it um, made the pattern had that color change that I wanted. I used two skeins of that done roving and you use two thirds, use all of one color and two thirds of the other. And that's why I knew it was safe lengthwise to take out that chunk of gray. So, um, or whatever color was there, I wanted the gray more towards the end. So I did that. And this is very nice. I was going to show my other radiant, radiant gradient shawl that I did also with a done roving yarn, but I used one skein and I started, I used one end and the other end. And that turned out like this. So this is one skein. These were greens and blues, and I do not remember the name of this colorway. There is a project page on Ravelry for this. This is a, it, with one skein, it's really more of a scarf, and I have worn it more like a scarf before. It's just up right around your neck. And this, we're using two skeins, is a bit larger. It should be used a lot more yarn, but with a pin, might be able to hold it up like that. So that's a finished knitted project. And I did finish a pair of socks, which I think I'd only finished one of them last time, but they are both done. This was cozy knitter yarn and they do look really short. They're not actually too short for me because I don't like my socks really high anyway, but the reason they're shorter is I had started this yarn making a pair of mitts, uh, fingerless mitts. And as I got, I had gotten the hole from the cuff up to the hand about here. And then I, no, actually, I think I actually finished the one and I didn't like the way that it worked out on my hand. So, I'd already used some of the yarn and I didn't know how much I would have left. So I decided I would just make a one repeat. This is one color repeat here for the leg and go from there. And I did, I had used some of the gray too. So I wasn't sure if I would have enough, which I thought if I don't have enough of the gray, I'll just will continue and do the toe all the way just in the yarn. I thought I had enough for that, but I had enough. so. These are finished, as I said, that was the Cozy Knitter yarn. Those are finished. And I started another pair of socks. And this is yarn that I dyed myself uh, quite a while ago. And I'm working on the second sock. These are the colors, purple, pink, green, and white. And I'm using green for the heel but not the cuff or the toe because I don't have very much of this green. But I did want it to be a contrast because it just, I just think it looks better with the striped yarn. So I picked up in the green and it came out on green, so it worked out really well. I kind of planned it that way, but that doesn't mean it's gonna work out for me. So I have one done, I have not even cast on the second one just because I've been working on other things, but I'll get to that. I. I like these a lot. So for um, knitting, I have one more thing and it's just, it's something that I'm working on right now and make another kind of long story. I'm using some yarn that was been in the stash when I didn't really even have a stash. I had purchased a magazine and I swear it was not this magazine, but this is what the pattern is. It's a Noro pattern called Mosaic Cow, 
and you can download a copy of this, which is what I had to do because I got rid of the magazine. What, when I had seen this, I, went, I was a very new knitter. I didn't really know one thing from another, but I liked it and I thought I could do it. And I wanted to use exactly the yarn that they use. So I had to go to some yarn shop. It was quite a ways away to even find that yarn, but it was, it's Noro Silk, is it Silk Garden Light? Yes, Silk Garden Light. So this is Noro right here. And it's, um, if it says someplace, here we go, Silk Garden Light. And this is what I didn't know. It's like, I, I I need the yarn that they made it in. That's what I need. And I wouldn't have been able to figure out at that point a substitution color-wise because this is so many different colors. And I wanted it to look like that. So I bought the two. You needed each of these balls are 50 grams. And you needed two of a light color. And that number is... Well, I don't know if this is the light or the dark, but the number is 2131. I think that is the light. And I dropped the other tag. And this one is 2087. So 2087 and 2131. And I did buy the same lot. I knew to do that. But I didn't pay any attention whatsoever to the fiber content of this yarn. It is 45% silk, well, silk garden light, makes sense, 45% mohair, and what, what do we have left there, 10%? Yes, 10% wool. But it's a really unusual yarn for compared to yarns I usually knit with, and I'm gonna show you one, what I mean. The yarn is very much thick and thin. These are two pieces of a strand that I cut off about 18 inches apart. So very, very thick and no real twist there to very, even more tightly spun than that is right there. So almost just looking at it, an Aran weight to a fingering weight. And I don't like knitting with it that much. When I come to those thick spots, it just doesn't make sense. And then sometimes you've got a really thin piece, which is tightly spun, so maybe that's actually even stronger. And you're knitting this thick part into it. So that's kind of bothersome. But also as a cowl, personally, I don't think I'm going to like the way this mohair feels. But I am going to wait and make sure that, you know, after if I block it and um, wet block it and give it a nice long soak, that maybe it's going to feel better. The other thing is you cannot predict on here which colors are going to cross each other. So the way they crossed one another, because you're using two different, this yarn is has um, long color runs. This, this is only half of a skein here. So you don't know on the dark skein what's going to hit with the light skein. So um, that part is slightly disappointing because I'm not always happy with what crosses. But let me show you what I have so far. I have used um, more than half of all of the yarn right now. And it's supposed to come out 60 inches long and then you sew it together. So you're just knitting like a long scarf and then you're going to stitch it together. It's supposed to get 60 inches long. When I had gotten half of my yarn used, I had 24 inches. So that says to me, I'm probably only gonna have 48 inches, but I think maybe with blocking, and I think this de this definitely needs blocking. I think it'll help the way it looks. And of course, like I said, the that mohair in there around the neck. Now here's where it started. And then you're actually, at least from what I'm seeing on this camera, seeing more contrast than I even see when I'm knitting. And there, so I've come back to, you can see here, there's the color that was here at the beginning, but these skeins are not put on, put up that way. They're, the color run must be longer than 100 grams. So they give you 100 grams and then they pick up 
again and give some the next part 100 grams. You do come into the same colors, but I and I did this intentionally. I went through and pulled it off until I got to where my first two balls were ending. I wanted it to at least be in the same color. So I can't explain it, but I, I cut it and I'm going to piece it together. <laughs> he said, here it is from a distance. So with 60 inches, you know, you go, see this already goes around the neck, but it's pretty wide um, and you're going to double it. That's what they've done here is they've doubled it around her neck. But again, it, it's pretty wide and I think it's going to touch the neck. I just, I kept going because when I bought this yarn for this purpose, I'd forgotten all about it. And I was looking for actually something to weave with just to see oh, what, what might be, you know, make something nice. And I saw this and I thought this actually might weave up very nicely and it might have woven up better than it's knitting up. But I thought, you know, I went to a lot of trouble to get th that yarn. And at the time, why didn't I knit it when I, right when I got it? After looking at the pattern, it was a chart and it scared me. I, I was just intimidated and I thought, I don't actually think I can do this. I had done some slip stitches, but I just thought, oh, I don't think I can do this. But it's it's not that it's hard. It's not. It's actually a really nice pattern. I think it would look really nice in the different yarn. Maybe one color for contrast and then one of those long color runs would, would be nice with it. Because it, I just think it's a really nice pattern. In the pattern, there are actually three more different um, designs you can do instead of this one. The, the pattern comes with four different charts, so you could choose a different one. I don't think there were pictures of the others, but there was a picture of this one. So this is my my cowl that we'll see how it turns out. I, I hope after I finish it. Let me see. Um, it's a 24 row repeat, but really just 12. You're doing front, you know, back and forth. So 12 different things, but the back coming back is you just do what you've done on the other side. And it's garter stitch, so it's just all knitting with some slip stitches. And it is taking me 50 minutes or an hour to do one repeat. And a repeat is about that two, two and a three eighths inches, I think I measured. So it's taking me, I'm trying to do two a day. Some days, one day I got three repeats done. So I haven't really been working on it for that long, but. It's going along pretty well right now. After once you you know get going, you know each row kind of. Oh yeah, that's this row or that that row. So pretty easy there. And work wise, oh, I totally forgot. I have one more finished objects. This is the Periscoping Sisters Mystery Knit Along. So spoiler alert, I guess if you're working on it and you haven't seen what it looks like, but this isn't really a spoiler alert because I made some modifications. This is every year that, well, I don't know that they've done it every year in a row, but I did one several years ago. They always do it around Mother's Day so that you would be finished by Mother's Day with their clues for the mystery knit along. And I did another shawl. I'll, I'll put a picture of it up here if I can. And that's the one that I did. And I think that was maybe the first year that they did it. So I just happened to see some something on Instagram and I thought, oh, you know, maybe I was actually looking for something to do and also looking for a way to use up some of my minis that I got with my Christmas advent calendar from Craft House Magic. And I thought, you know, that would be perfect because the way her advent calendar was knit in a gradient, more or less, or a fade that it would, the colors would one to the next go together. And I thought, me, this is what I'm gonna do. The only problem was you, you needed your, your fingering weight minis that you're gonna change colors, but they're being held double. And the other yarn that you need, which is they call the, I think it was called the main color, is um, they said a DK weight, but it's 220 grams, um, 220 yards in 100 grams. And 
that's a, like a light worsted too. I think it's like the upper end of DK, the lower end of worsted weight yarns. But I didn't have a lot of any of that that would just go with these colors. So I finally ended up going with this bear yarn that I had that's a worsted weight. It's a Knit Picks Felici. This is what I have left over from 100 grams gain, and this is 24 grams left over. I had this for something else. I was going to dye it for something else, but ultimately I just thought, I can't, it, nothing that I have, and even if I had to order something, I still would not have known what to order with all these colors. So I just thought that'll, that'll be best, that I just have something neutral, and I think it did work out really well. So th this shawl, I used 22 of the minis that came in my advent calendar. It started here with this pink, and you'll see these little things. They call them toggles. And I think the technique, while it's at the end of a row, so that makes it a little bit different. I've done them on the edge of a shawl, and they were called picos, but pretty much the same process. I didn't block this, a wet block it. I did block it, but I laid it out on my blocking mat and then I just sprayed it along, particularly, well, really just the these because they were kind of going, you know, heggly peggly all over the place. And I wanted them to stick out sort of straight. So anyway, it went from this pink into these colors. So you would be then holding two colors together and then let one, so the first, the first um, 10 gram mini, after I had done five grams of it, I cut that and added the new yarn so that I would always be, you know, running out of one and halfway through and then adding a new color. And going to some purples, which then went to greens. And there's a little bit of maybe, this is maybe more yellow, but it's kind of a greeny yellow and then orange into these blues and then some aquamar green. So those are some greens too. This shawl has an edging that looks like I-cord, but it's fake I-cord. And since that's kind of the jam of the pattern, I won't explain how they did that, but she, they also did that on the first one that I did. And I remember always liking that effect. And that is where you're running your threads up too, so as you're crossing threads to keep them from, you know, being visible, they're gonna hide underneath this, and I think that was very effective. They said to bind off, but didn't specify a binding, so I did the normal shawl bind off that I do that's stretchy, even though it doesn't really have to be very stretchy on this one. I could have probably done a different kind of bind off there. It's pretty big. Pretty big, you know. It has 75 grams of the light worsted yarn and then probably 20, 220 grams of fingering weight yarn, but it was held double. So you can, it's pretty, pretty big. I am in love with the colors. Now, here's what, why this isn't right. This isn't like other people's will be. You start off doing this. And then it was some place around here was clue two. And clue two was making a change. Now, it's a mystery knit along, so there's not a picture of what the change is gonna look like on the whole thing to make a decision. And I was just loving this so much that I just kept doing clue one. The whole thing is clue one. I didn't add clue two or clue three. I am now seeing some finished pictures, I'm glad I did it this way. Those look great, but I, I liked seeing that each of these fading sections were the same size. And I think you were going to be doing a bigger section of your, the white in my case, or off-white cream. So this was a fun knit. I enjoyed it and it went really fast once I get, got going, but I really struggled before I got started on it just what like what to use and moving those colors around because I had not kept the her fade in order 
So just moving them around and deciding, I did decide not to put two of them in. I, I, I could have, I could have kept going. I could have kept going for a long time on this because it was really a lot of fun. I'd highly recommend it doing it the way I did it, just as an easy, fun knit. You're, you're after a certain number of rows, I didn't even have to look at the pattern. I, it was six row repeats and you know I didn't have to even look at it. I just knew what to do. But you know the the beginnings and ends gave you a little bit of variety and changing your colors. There were a pretty good number of ends to weave in because you've got all these minis that you're you're changing up. But that I don't mind weaving in ends, so that was no big deal. And I think that is all the knitting that I have been doing and all the weaving also. So what I have still is our children's literature book. This children's literature book I ordered from The Woolery, which is www.woolery.com. And they sell a lot of things for weaving and spinning and yarn for knitting as well. Although they're much more on the weaving, spinning side, I think. But they do have knitting yarns to sell as well. They have a great big store wherever they're located, but they're not any they're not in my state, so I didn't go there. And I happened to click on this for kids tab one day, and they had some children's literature books there. Qu quite a few, and a few that I already owned, but they had two that I had never seen. Well, three I'd never seen before. I ordered two of them, and I'll probably end up ordering the other one too, but at the time I thought I better stop there. There, this one is, uh, the, the two that I ordered are by the same authors with same illustrators, but different topics. And this is called The Weaver's Surprise, written by Tom um, Neasley, maybe? Illustrated by Megan Lloyd. So here's the cover, sorry about that glare. The Weaver's Surprise, and as you can see, there is a man weaving with floor loom there, and this little family of mice, and he's got some rugs here. He uses his loom for making rugs. The illustrations are charming. I love the illustrations in this book. Down a long winding road in low lying meadow, an old man weaves rugs on a loom. So of course I can't read the whole thing to you, but I thought I could start there. And this little family of mice, they wonder what they're gonna do in the winter and they see this home and they decide to go in and what do they see but this weaver and they're thinking this is a great place. Um, just as the last little mouse squeezed through, they heard swish, thump, bump, swish, thump, bump. So the author's giving you some sounds that go along with the weaving of these rugs and great deal of detail, great drawings of the parts of the loom and how the weaver is using those. And the mice decide this is where they're going to stay and they they look over in a corner and they find a rug. It's this beautiful green and purple rug and um, they decide it's not that cozy so they chew a hole in it and take out the fluff and make just a great little bed. Well, unfortunately, a couple comes in and guess what color rug they want? Exactly, he has the exact thing. But when he's opening it, and please notice the other things in there, the spinning wheel, the swifts, just love it. Yarn hanks hanging on the wall. And this kind of scares everybody because look what happens when they, he rolls that rug out and there goes a family of mice scurrying away. Well, the mice feel terrible about that because it was the only one he had in that color. It was his favorite. But these little mice, look at them. They are going to get out the warping board and they are going to warp that loom. And they're gonna get busy and make another rug, which is what they do. See them tying some fringe there. I think this is a great story, especially if you have a weaver and a loom in your house and children, it would be great to um, share this story with them. But it's actually just, a, I think it's a cute story. 
And I know elementary school age children would enjoy that, whether there's a loom to look at and they know anything about that or not. The Weaver's Surprise. I hope you um, have someone you might want to share that book with. It was also available on Amazon. Now, when I very first heard about the book on there, I looked to see, and it was very hard to find on Amazon, but if you put in the in, the entire title and you get the, or the author's names in there, it did come up. So it is available that way, but I actually would like to support smaller businesses when I can, so I that's where I wanted to order it from. So, but great story. Well, it's nice to stop and share part of your day with you today. I hope that you are enjoying whatever crafts you're working on and I'll see you again soon. Bye.